It's time to give the people what they want. It's Jalen and Jacoby. He is Jalen Rose. What up, though? No? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. Together, we are Jalen Jacoby on ESPN2. What do we do? We get a people what they want. Well, the people of Greensboro, North Carolina, got what they wanted. This is head coach Wes Miller after a big win going into the locker room doing his thing. Yes, 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 yes. I'm now quitting this show to dedicate my life to being an unpaid volunteer at the University of Green, North Carolina Greensboro men's basketball team. Jalen, how fired up does Wes Miller make you? Extremely fired up. These are the things that post-career don't satisfy. The roar of the crowd is one thing, but pats on your back from your teammates, enthusiasm after a big play, a great quarter, a nice win, Oh, man, these moments go down in so many athletes' domain. It's probably some of the greatest memories of their lives, and I'm pretty sure those student-athletes, you like that, call them student-athletes, are actually getting a chance to experience that. It is terrific. I love Wes Miller, and I predict that the North Carolina Greensboro will definitely win the NCAA tournament this year. Moving on, though, we had the biggest game of the NFL season this weekend, and it lived up to the height. Big plays from big players, back and forth momentum swings, turnovers, long passes, runs. It had everything, and it came down to a final drive by the Steelers. And this play, tight end Jesse James catches the ball and then leans forward and fumbles it a bit as he crosses the goal line. Jalen Rose, do you think this catch or catch from Jesse James was a catch? I'm a Detroit Lions fan. The rules started to flip when Calvin Johnson was involved with two separate plays that were similar. Also, Dez Bryant in the playoff game versus... The Packers. Oh! That was against the Packers. So... With that being said, I don't know why everyone is up in arms. Chris Carter, the Hall of Famer, said it best, and I agree. When I used to play pick em up, mess em up, street football, middle school football for the Beacons, and I showed up at the Silverdome, thought I was tough wearing dirty pants, but all I was doing was looking trifling. If you can't catch the football and give it to the official after the play, it's not a catch. I don't know why everybody's so upset. He caught the ball. His knee was down. You're not down until somebody touches you. His momentum had him hit the ground. At some point, he didn't have control of the football. No catch. I don't know why everybody got their underwear in a bunch about this. The rule is clear. The visual is clear. He did not make a touchdown on that play. Stop whining. It didn't feel like a touchdown as we understand it based on the history that you referenced. It seemed like as to the naked eye as a fan, sure, that's a catch, a touchdown, whatever. But if we have this history that you mentioned, especially the Des Bryant play, you have to control the ball through the ground. He did not do it. It was not a touchdown. However, when it gets ruled it's not a touchdown, you're like, you know what? I guess it's bad for Steelers fans, but great for football fans because now we're going to overtime. All they have to do is hit this chip shot field goal. We're going to go to overtime, and it's going to be make this great game even better. But then what happened, Mr. Rose? What did Russell Westbrook finally have to say, breaking his silence when Kevin Durant initially left Oklahoma City? That's, that's cute, that's cute man. man. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> that's what the Steelers got caught up in, being too cute. A blue-collar organization. Mike Tomlin is one of my favorite coaches in any professional domain. I would probably run through a brick wall and try to hit somebody as hard as I can if he was my head coach. However, 
With your offense as explosive as it is, a two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback that's amongst the league leader in yards, Antonio Bryant, who's amongst the league leaders in yards, receiving, Brown. touchdowns, all of the elite categories. Le'Veon Bell, who's a two-way force in the backfield. You have Juju. You have Martavius. And you trying to fool somebody on a whack play? Like, that was just a terrible decision. And the thing about Big Ben, I don't know if he's coming back next year, but, man, he wasn't holding no punches. That wasn't on me. <laughs> yeah, that was that not was, on me. No, no, no. They told, they told me I had to run a play. They told me I had to run a play. So I had one receiver. He had to get past four different one defensive thing. backs. And, look, I had to throw it. Here's the thing, Ben. You could have just thrown the ball out of the back of the end zone. You know what I mean? You could have just thrown the ball into the ground. You could have done anything. <laughs> you could have taken a sack. There's so many other things you could have done besides throwing that interception. But I love, I love, you know, I always say, like, after something goes wrong, you have to look in the mirror first before you criticize other people. Ben, Bear, he, ben Roethlisberger has no mirrors. He's like, that wasn't me. I didn't do it. Nothing to do with me, by the way. But there's also this bad news from that great and game. And he named names. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, oh yeah, I got that call from Todd. That was from Todd, yeah. Do you, want, he said, do, you want, do you want his extension? <laughs> you can call him up because I don't know if he's in his locker right now. <laughs> so then we have this. Unfortunately, in, in the middle of that great game, we had a partially torn calf muscle from Antonio Brown. It certainly seemed like these Steelers and Patriots are a very good matchup, and this wouldn't be the last time we would see these teams go head-to-head. -head. However, without MVP candidate Antonio Brown, seems like the rest of the AFC is a little bit weakened. Can anyone threaten the Patriots' return trip to the Super Bowl from this conference? I think so, because just because certain teams aren't playing their best football at this current time of the year, in particular, Kansas City, Pittsburgh, we saw how they went down in defeat, and then you have an upstart like the Jacksonville Jaguars who still have to prove themselves, and they had a terrific win on the, over the weekend. The Patriots still have to be your favor, especially when Gronk catches for a career high in yards like he did this past weekend. Oh, speaking of this past weekend, didn't on this program we said the Rams are going to beat the Seahawks? Yes. Didn't we say that the Carolina Panthers were going to beat the Green... The Carolina Panthers are going to beat the Green Bay Packers? Yes. And then Aaron Rodgers would now basically be benched the final couple of games because they're out of the race. Didn't that already get said as broken news on this program? Yes. Mr. Rose. Just saying. There's an, there's an aware, the, the Carolina Panthers are an aware of investigation. And investigators have revealed that at least four people that worked for the franchise received payments, sort of hush money, another way to put it, because of the misbehavior of Oni Jared Richardson. There's also a claim that he used a racial slur. And with all of this happening, he announced that he would then sell those Carolina Panthers. Well, shortly after that announcement was another announcement, but this one was from Diddy. North Carolina Panthers are up for sale. I will be the best NFL owner that you can imagine. I will immediately address the Colin Kaepernick situation and put him in a running for next year's starting quarterback. It's just competition, baby. It's just competition. But also, I will have the best halftime show, the best selection of music, and we will win. Okay, Jalen, Diddy made a case for himself to be the owner of the Carolina Panthers. What do you think? I love Diddy, that's family. But I wrote down a couple of things that he acknowledged that he would do. Okay, good. First off, Diddy. We got to make sure Ciroc is now the official owner of the stadium that the team plays in. Oh, we got to get that done. Ciroc or Stadium one has of your a nice brands. ring. Nice ring. Number one in Forbes. We got to get that done. Number two, winning has to be first, not fourth. What, what about the music? What also, about the music? <laughs> I don't know if the other 31 owners realize that you're going to want to bring Colin Kaepernick back in the league. And then number two, Cam Newton definitely don't want to compete for a starting position. <laughs> Cam Newton's like, what? He only won he? MVP the last couple of years, <laughs> two couple of years ago. You see me play, right, Diddy? What are we bringing in a new quarterback for, Diddy? <laughs> I love the halftime zone. He's like, those I eight I agree half -times. with you about all of, no doubt. I agree with you about all of the entertainment, pregame, halftime, postgame. That's going to be fly. But again, it's good that he got this post out there. Hey, Diddy, holla at your boy. I want to be an investor. 
Yeah, it seems like everybody wants to be in the ownership group now. Ka Kaepernick's like, yeah, I want to be a quarterback. I also want to be part of ownership. Steph is for this. But you also notice how he call it the North Carolina Panthers. It's like, come on, Diddy. Diddy, you can't. You got to know the team name before you put up a couple bill to buy them. You know what I mean? You got to know the team name. Come on, Diddy. They would have the best half times in the league, though, and the best music, whatever that means. Coming up next on Jalen and Jacoby. And we're going to get a Biggie statue in front of the building. We'll finally get a finally. Biggie statue. We'll finally get a Biggie statue. That's probably the only thing that I like about this proposal from Diddy. Coming up next, me, Jalen Method Man, keep it moving. You can't give yourself a nickname. You can't buy your own <laughs> he didn't statue. Buy it? I think it's Ego Manayo. It's what? Ego Manayo. I met him once. I'm trying to think of the real pronunciation. Ego maniac? Ego man... Ego, ego maniacal. You can tell they just said it into our ear because we said it at yeah. the same time. It's ego maniacal. <laughs> we, we are the dumbest hey. radio hosts. <laughs> Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN2. Jalen Rose, not everything in the world of sports and pop culture is worth discussing. So you and me and Method Man, it's like keep it moving. Keep it moving, you know we keep it moving. <laughs> First up, Jadavian Clowney said Blake Bortles was trash. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. You can't. Get thumped by Bortles in the Jacksonville Jaguars and then take shots. Keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> Leangelo and LaMelo Ball got an offer from the Harlem Globetrotters. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Harlem Globetrotters? In business with the Ball family? Hit the brakes. <laughs> Cheese and Jet are the Harlem Globetrotters for speaking with TMZ. And when it was brought up that perhaps the Ball Brothers should join the team, they said if it doesn't work out in Lithuania, they can join us here in Harlem. Jalen, do you think this is even on the table? I think it will be on the table only for LeVar to play. <laughs> that, that's what it's about. He got a ball. Got to teach him the trick. I have a new prediction. But how Alonzo LeVar was the star? I have a new prediction. Remember, I remember I said that they would go to Lithuania and last for two weeks, and then they would come back? I have a new prediction about this. I don't think they actually even go to Lithuania. Remember I said this. I do not think they will actually get on an airplane and go to Lithuania. Remember where you heard that, Jalen and Jacoby. Next, a French soccer player went to a party in blackface. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. French, soccer player, black face, hit the brakes. Atletico Madrid's Antoine Griezmann went to a party dressed as an NBA player, kind of looking like a mix between a globetrotter and an NBA all-star, head to toe in black face with the afro and everything. Jalen, what is happening in the world? What, what year is this? Thought it was 2017, about to be 2018. Uh, What's happening? I mean, this is still happening. And like, there are a lot of things that are happening in this country nowadays that have me shaking my head. This is just another one internationally that, why explain the game like Pac said? People ain't listening. Good point. Master P claims that he was reached out to and offered a position and almost hired as the assistant coach of the New Orleans Pelicans in the NBA. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Big shout to the homie P. I was fortunate enough to play his long lost brother in a video, Miss My Homies. He actually owes me $20,000 in no limit gear. What? For sh out shooting him in UCLA. So keep it moving. $20,000. Oh, I want to get that $20,000 worth of no limit gear for the staff. Next, it looks like real UFO footage has been made public. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. UFO public, keep it moving. You know I have veto power on this. And whenever there's a UFO topic, <laughs> I'm going to hit the brakes myself. Look at this video. This is a video taken from military planes. 
military planes flying around, and there's audio from the pilots talking to each other saying, what's that? Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, look at it. It's rotating. It's flying into the wind at 110 miles an hour. How is it doing this? We have no idea what this thing is. We don't know how it works. There's also being revealed that there has been for years, it's been like seven years, they have a, a secret investigative unit at the government just to look into UFOs. They have video of them. There's, they've revealed that they are tracking them. If the government is applying real money resources towards this. Are you still going to sit there and deny that UFOs exist and you're going to deny that aliens are on this planet? All of this altitude is making me get sick. I had to channel my inner red man for my sinuses. You really don't believe in UFOs? You don't think that was a UFO that we just watched? What was that that we just watched? What the was that? The closest thing what I know that? about UFOs is Mort from Ork. Nanu Nanu. <laughs> WWE Chairman Vince McMahon is considering bringing back the XFL. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. XFL, please keep it moving. <laughs> oh, man. I'd rather they see move, somebody else bring back move. the USFL <laughs> that's running our country when the Michigan Panthers, led by Bobby A. Bear and Anthony Carter, won the championship. I'm just saying. Under Armour is going to drop Steph Curry shoes out of the sky with drones. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. It's only right. Steph Curry with the shot. Stop shout to my guy Stone. Hit the brakes. I need to hear more. If you follow Under Armour on Instagram at 10 p.m. Pacific on Saturday, December 16th, there'll be an interactive scavenger hunt where you can find a drop zone pin and they will drop shoes down from the sky using drones. It's actually 10 a.m., not 10 p.m. Jalen, are you going to join the scavenger hunt for some Steph Curry's? Well, it sounds like the scavenger hunt already happened because you said December 16th. Well, we missed that one then. Listen, organization and research. That's the most you've ever cared about a question I've ever asked. You know what I mean? You barely even listen to the questions I have. <laughs> the one time I get something wrong, you point it out. You never listen to me. Our All studio. you hear is the noun, <laughs> and you just come up with your stupid take on whatever noun you heard. The one time we make a mistake, and you call us out. Can I, I mean, if we called you out every time we, you made a mistake or a factual error, this show would be nothing but that. What, what is happening now? What's happening now? <laughs> I'm on my Morris Dane's around. <laughs> I'm not doing this show anymore. I quit this show. I might be back after this. I might not. Whatever. It's December 16th. Who cares? They're dropping, they're dropping shoes from drones. I wanted to talk about it. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> At the Books Company, our wide select. Jalen Rose, a source close to Cleveland point guard Isaiah Thomas, says that he is targeting the first week of January to come back. However, when you look at the schedule on January 3rd, you see Cavs at Celtics right there on the schedule. Jalen. Do you think they will save Isaiah Thomas's return until, I don't know, maybe after he has to face Kyrie Irving in Boston? I think once he practices a few times, plays five on five, shows that he can scrimmage and he gets healthy, they're going to put him out there regardless of the opponent. And if the opponent just happens to be the Boston Celtics, I think that's going to be a terrific adrenaline rush for a player to average 29 points for that team. They traded him in an offseason, basically acknowledging that they didn't want to give him a big-time contract while he had a hip injury after he also led them to a number one seed last year. Would be great theater for the league. Jalen, am I crazy to think that if I was the Boston, if I were the Cleveland Cavaliers, I would just wait until after that game? Like, why would you put him out there in his first game or second game in that kind of environment with that kind of just attention and expectations? I just think that would be a bad strategy. Do you disagree? Why, why wait? He's not a NASCAR driver that's 18 years old that you're putting him out there with seasoned vets that's been doing it 30 years or a high school football player that you want to play against NFL players, Marshawn Lynch style when he went back to his high school, is basketball. And so if he's healthy and ready to go, 
You should put them out there. And I actually appreciate it and surprised a lot of people didn't talk more about this. The tweet about JRLA sponsor and my little brother Jamal Crawford, Isaiah Thomas, his fellow homie from the Seattle area, tweeted that he's wasting his talents in Minnesota right now because they're not giving him minutes. Okay. Jalen, earlier this evening, Staples Center and the Lakers franchise honored Kobe Bryant by putting not one but both of his numbers up in the rafters. Now, you famously played and tried to injure Kobe Bryant and the Lakers in the finals, and you were around, you were adjacent to the 81-point game. You are forever linked with Kobe Bryant's career. Do you feel that's kind of unfair? I feel it's terrific. Are you kidding me? One of the all-time great players, every time his name gets mentioned, my name gets mentioned? Is kids out here named Jalen? Like, this is why we do a series called Jalen versus Everybody and have Kobe Bryant starring in the first episode. We get the people what they want. Congratulations, Black Mamba. See if they put me in that statue guarding you on D. Of course. And before we end the program, we wanted to offer our support to one of our colleagues. ESPN President John Skipper has announced that he's going to resign from the position, and he has cited substance abuse issues for the reason. We just wanted to give him a nod, and without him, there is no Grantland, there is no Jalen and Jacoby, there is no studio. Jalen? I love and appreciate and respect John Skipper. Very grateful for everything you did for me. We'll be praying for you and your family. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh -huh.